Hello everybody, my name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Academy. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. Uh, today I want to talk about color and theming and branding your application. And I don't necessarily mean the, uh, the colors that you use or, the, or these colors that we're using here to signify you know, a priority level. I'm more so talking about a color uh, palette here that our app actually operates on. So if, we're, if we can avoid the actual contents of this page here, we can see that we have this purplish color, this slightly darker purple color, and then we're going to go ahead and see that we have a like teal color. And then if we go ahead and go to this um, page, we can see that those colors are kind of reflected in the UI here. Right, so we haven't really done anything for these particular items uh, or UI elements, but because we're using a particular theme, a material components theme, and we're using material component, material UI material components, uh, they they take from this palette that has been set up, and they automatically use this accent color here for little things like radio buttons, or uh, you know a checkbox, or a switch, or uh, maybe even like little, you know, additional icons and such. And then there are certain things that have the primary color, this purplish color uh, here. You know, the button color, the 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 color of this border here. We see we have a, an error state, and it's a reddish color. Um, and here you can see that accent color coming out again. So, where are these colors coming from? How are they? being set, what's going on here, um, because we haven't really discussed, other than these red, orange, and green colors, we haven't really discussed anything about colors specifically. Um, so if you take a look inside of your resource um, values folder, there's going to be a colors.xml and then a themes.xml. And so these two work together, um, you know, work together with one another to actually bring out exactly what we end up seeing. So we can see here they have uh, basically the Android default colors that come with it, uh, that come with every project, a set of purple colors, uh, a set of teal colors, black, white, and then we've actually added this header background color, which is like a off grayish color. Um, and then to take that a little bit further, that, that's great. That's kind of, you know, you can imagine this is just like declaring variables, really. These don't mean anything until they're actually being used. But it's just a simple way for you to, you know, be able to reference the same color over and over again. And then moreover, inside of the themes, which is also in the values directory, you can see that there are a couple attributes set up here, right? So we have a particular theme here, the material components, day, night, dark action bar. We have a color primary, color primary variant, color on primary. And it's basically the same idea for our secondary color. And then here we have our status bar color coming in at that darker uh, variant, right? So then you can see that inside these attributes, we're actually referencing a color value. And if you command click or control click into it, you'll actually be able to navigate to that file and see what's going on. Uh, and then that's basically how we get this kind of a, of a, of a layout, right? It says, uh, you know this particular UI element or maybe even the button because that's a little more obvious You know because it's a material button the background tint color that it's being defaulted to is our color primary And because our color primary is set to purple 500 well, then that's where we get the purple color from same idea with you know What's going on up here in the in the top of the application same idea here with the uh, specific UI elements here these little text views and such and then these uh, other components, I guess, actually, you can see tap into the secondary color to kind of provide that little bit of a pop, provide that little bit of contrast, as you can see here. So this is all good and well. It's a pretty simple and pretty basic implementation, but uh, we want to expand on that and I want to take you a little bit further into it. So I'll link this in the description here, but there is the uh, this whole like color discussion on the Material Design website. And you can see here, this is basically the default palette that the application is set up with. So you can see the primary and the primary variant are these purple colors, the secondary and the secondary variant are these teal colors, and then the on primary and on secondary are white and black, which are color on primary, color on secondary, and they're set to white and white and black. So they've, or you know, when you create a project that kind of set things up for you so that you have a palette to work with and whatnot. But we can actually basically override this palette, extend this palette and create our own 
uh, because you see here we don't have anything that goes along with the uh, the background, the surface, the error, or any of these on background, on surface, on error colors. Those don't exist in our theme here, and because of that, they are just you know sitting at whatever they default to. We you do have to take it a step further, and I don't know if you've noticed in some of the um, some of the layout files that we've done here, let's see, fragment home. Um, so, so here you go, the floating action button, you can see here we have nothing to do with color teal in any of these attributes, but because it's a material element, it does something internally. And then let's just say if we wanted to, uh, you know, change it real quick, I think it would be background tint, uh, you know, real quick to black. Now you can see that it's changed to black. So it has defaults and, and it just fits in with that whole material theming that they you know this little chart here that they have uh, for us and whatnot. That that only does so. That only does so much, right? Like like as in the constraint layout doesn't actually have uh, any of this coloring or theming applied to it. So in order to reference basically this palette that we're looking for, um, we can do so very easily. So traditionally, you can access a resource with you know okay, we want the background to be black, right? Uh, you can just go ahead and go right into your color. Uh, file and reference a particular color. However, A, um, that's like a little, it's not brute force, but it's just a little like too specific at times. Um, and then B, you know, as you start moving into building more complex things, having a, a deeper palette to work with, or uh, looking into dark mode uh, and, and supporting the dark mode colors, if you just had it reference color black, it's going to be black in both light and dark mode. So you kind of don't have that scalability. And so instead, what we would like to do is reference with a question mark, this little attribute, and then we will call this one actually the background. So this here, this idea with the question mark attribute slash background is going to resolve not into a particular color that exists here. Like we don't, there's obviously nothing named background here. However, it's really referencing this background that exists here, which is you know, embedded inside the application. So then we can actually go ahead and modify that if we really wanted to by doing something like uh, item name, we'll do background, and then let's just set, let's see here, what do our colors look like? Um, not that great. So let's just go with the purple 200. And now if we flip back to our little home fragment, we can actually see that in the editor it has um, uh, updated. And then if we go ahead and uh, run the application, I don't know if that's going to work. Yep. Uh, now we can see that this background color here actually um, you know, has been updated and, and we're starting to go down this road of theming. Now if we go to the next page, it's back to white. And that's because this fragment here doesn't have its root layout uh, declared to have this background attribute. So basically what I'm trying to show you here is that there's a scalable way to use this kind of information so that we can just very easily decide yes this element is a background element, this element is a surface element, um, and so therefore if we put text on this surface element uh, we're going to reference the on surface you know, attribute, and so that should complement the surface itself. And so, basically, if you set up all of your um, all of your layout files and, and XML and, and all of the components with that understanding of not necessarily referencing an actual color, but instead saying, yes, this is a background. Yes, this is a surface. Yes, this is a text on the background or text on the surface. Then, if you decide to change your theme, your app doesn't break, right? If you just change the values that those colors or that those attributes reference, the background, the um, you know, color on background, if you just change those colors behind the scenes, your app just gets a whole new feel, but everything stays the same, it stays consistent, it doesn't uh, completely break, and you have to you know, update things in a hundred places. Um, so, I guess to have a little bit of a discussion about you know the actual colors themselves. So we've kind of talked about primary and secondary. Those are kind of your overarching you know like big scale things like this little app bar or um, you know a tab layout or I don't know maybe maybe a, a background of like a particular card or something like that. And then the secondary color comes in as a little accent on the particular UI elements and such. 
um, and then primary, of course, to, to kind of theme your actual um, uh, UI elements. But then if we take a look at this screen here, we can see this purplish background here as the background. And then we could maybe think of these um, cards here that sit on top of the background as a surface. So then we can start to kind of, you know, extract away exactly what color we want to put in here and just say, yeah, you know, this, this is a surface uh, uh, element. It's something that exists on the background. Uh, like it's, it's, it's a parent layout that exists on the background, right? It's not just a text view that exists on the background. It's, uh, it's a card view. It's a constraint layout. It's a linear layout. It's a recycler, view. like whatever it is, you know, it's a surface on your background and then you can theme the things that are within it, you know, this toilet paper text, the avocados, the fourth toast text, those would be deemed as the uh, color on surface. So hopefully you can see where this is going. And basically with this idea here of these 12 different attributes, uh, you get a pretty good understanding of the, or you get a pretty good coverage of all of the options, of all of the uh, different things that you need to do. And it actually lends itself pretty nicely to the night mode and to the dark theme. And so actually without getting too far into it, um, Let's just go ahead and let's just revert this really quickly. And we're going to rerun some things. Okay, so we're back to normal. And we're going to pull down here this little icon here with the little day night thing is the dark theme. So we can go ahead and click it. It's actually going to rebuild our application. And so now you're going to say, okay, wow, this is our app in dark mode at the moment. So things kind of work well here, except for the fact that we are explicitly calling out the background color of the header, which is this grayishy color. Um, but if we go to this screen, you can actually see that, you could argue that this is a, a very nice looking uh, background color, or, or a very nice looking UI here that kind of plays very nicely with the idea of the dark theme, right? But we need a little bit of work here. So point is that uh, that actually exists inside of another um, uh, attribute or sorry and uh, another package here so it, there's the values package and then there's the values night package and so then the idea is you know we have files named the same in both of these packages right so in values there's a themes.xml and in values night there's a themes.xml as well but depending upon which mode you're in in your you know emulator in your device uh, the system will load the correct file based on that UI mode so when we're in light mode, we're looking at the themes and the colors and the strings and the ID, all that stuff in the um, in the light, or sorry, in the, in the values repository. And then as we flip to night, we actually go ahead and update to uh, like this. Basically, overrides the values that exist. So then we can see here if we put these. Let's just split this. If we put these next to one another, uh, where is it? Here it is we can see that there are slight differences here, right? So we can see that the color primary is purple 500 in light mode, but in dark mode, it's purple 200. And the primary variant actually stays the same, but the color on primary in light mode is white, whereas in dark mode, it's black. So that kind of gives you the, you know, darker feel of uh, some of the, do we even have, no, uh, oh, well, yeah, here, the save button, right? So the save button is this lighter purple with a black uh, text on it. And then if we go ahead and flip to light mode, it's that purple 500 um, and then the white text on it. So hopefully you can kind of get an idea of A, how, the, how this stuff works, and then B, how uh, that works within a particular theme. And this theme here being the light theme and then this theme here being the dark mode theme. So the idea is that you can basically specify two different themes, and when your user switches between light and dark mode, they will actually see like two different appearances of your app, and they shouldn't absolutely differ. You know, it shouldn't be predominantly purple and then like predominantly red in the, in the, uh, the night theme, but you know, depending upon what you're trying to do, whether it's you know, the, the, the Robinhood app, 
right? Where during trade hours, the app has this like greenishy light, like enabled feel. And then in the after hours, um, it kind of goes to like this orangey reddishy feel, right? So that's kind of accomplished with this idea of like the day night and the different um, themes that you can apply at different literal hours of the day, which is interesting. Um, but you know, it boils down to the same concept about being able to provide the same look and feel, but with just a little bit different edge on it, right? Maybe it's a little airier during the day and maybe it's a little eerier at night or something along those lines. So hopefully that is, you know, something that, uh, that, that you find useful or hopefully that you, you find interesting, you know, on your own personal device. Maybe you do like dark mode better. I know I personally do. So, uh, you know, we kind of try to stay with, um, or at least know what's going on and, you know, build our own theme around that. So I think this has been a pretty good overview. The last thing that I'm going to say about all of this um, is that there is a, at the bottom of this page, there are, well, so, there's so much stuff on this page about colors, themings, and what to do, what not to do, and different examples and stuff like that. But then they have these different, uh, actually a little outdated, I guess, but um, these different palettes here that exist from the 50 to 900 range, and then I guess they have these A values as well. Um, to kind of give you like this gradient of a particular color. So if you're looking for, oh yes, I love this deep purple, I'm going to sit in this family, like feel free, go ahead. This is a palette literally created by like professionals <laughs> that uh, like study color and analyze that stuff. And so they actually do look very nice and there are a couple that are um, quite appealing and stuff like that. Uh, but on top of that, there is a color tool that uh, is provided again in this material uh, resource pack kind of thing where you can actually go ahead and create basically your theme here uh, in real time but it's only the same six screenshots or whatever it doesn't pull in your app or anything like that but you can see here you know okay if I were to take this primary color of like this I don't know this purpley and then we were to take this secondary color be something super dark you know you get a certain theme or a certain feel or maybe you go a little bit lighter and bluish and uh, maybe go a little lighter there as well, or, or I don't know, maybe like a little red or something. I don't know. You know, you, you could figure it out. You can also go through the custom and, and change things around and, and get to exactly what you want um, that way as well, which is pretty cool and nice. And yeah, it doesn't look good. But point being, you can actually then export this scheme and this, um, you know, like I guess palette, if you will. You can export it as Android, iOS, or Code Pen. I'm actually not familiar with that. but uh, it, it drops a JS, uh, an XML file that you can then copy and paste um, into your file or into your project, and then you can use those colors appropriately. Uh, so, actually, in the next episode, I'm going to go ahead and just show you what we've, and by we, I mean me and, and my girlfriend, because we spent way too much time on it <laughs> last night trying to figure out what would uh, look good and, and, and go with one another and stuff like that. But uh, came up with like a little bit of a theme, a little bit of a theme that works in light mode and dark mode and some differences and some similarities and a little bit of, uh, you know, updating our actual layout files to use, you know, the question mark attribute background and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully that's interesting to you. And uh, if so, I will catch you in the next one where we're going to go ahead and just update our theme and we'll see how much that that can actually change the look and feel of the application. I hope to see you there.